Good evening. Is um, this is our second attempt at a selectman's meeting via Zoom? It's uh, Tuesday, April twenty eighth, two thousand and twenty. Um, is all the selectmen are present, along with the town manager and the town clerk. Is we will be joined later by the town assessor Paul. Is uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for what we stand and one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice, for all. The first item is the approval of our April 14th minutes. Make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented. Second. We have a motion by Ken and a second by Noah. I will go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself? Yes. There's five to talk to Daddy. Um, we have no public comment that we know of is uh, is the governor has come out with uh, new directives about businesses and things opening up. We haven't had a real chance to look at this yet, but we don't know exactly what that means. There has been some complaints about closing down the, the uh, kayak launch and Hat fields, but I think that this will be able to address that with the new gut guidelines. So, is, um, hopefully, you know, in the next few days, we can get more information on that. Uh, we have no public hearings. What was that? Did somebody say, <laughs> okay. Um, is no reports of committees. Is uh, brings us down to uh, town manager's report. You ready, Steve? Sorry. Can you hear me now? Maybe we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, fire station's moving right along. They've been putting in windows. They're making good progress. The interior walls are up. Uh, they're getting, they're working on the roof uh, today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. The sewer, the sewer line's all connected, and they're looking at the water line, uh, what they're going to do. Uh, is run the water line up along the road next to the sewer or in that area. And the water line for the police department is up on Logan Street. And the cost, uh, it makes sense for us to run a brand new line all the way in, get rid of the, the vault there. I'm not sure everybody knows that. We want to get rid of that uh, vault because it's more hassle to try to keep it from freezing because it's up higher. Um, and just run a brand new line all the way into the police station. I gave Will the email to the before I had to do that. It makes perfect sense. So uh, they won't have to worry about that in the future. Um, besides that, they're uh, waiting uh, on CMP. We haven't heard a word from them yet. Um, they're supposed to send me an invoice that could come at a later date, I guess, but um, they're moving right along. Um, we got notified by the school department that uh, their increase is over 3%, which is uh, a little bit less than what it's been the last few years, but still uh, it's about a $260,000 increase to over last year's budget. Um, and we're waiting for uh, Paul or Karen to give us the updated evaluation numbers so we can um, look at what our tax rate might be. So we're waiting on that. Otherwise, Robert and I look, went around looking at the roads that we we're going to pave. Um, and they just seem to get worse every time I look at them. So with all the rain and crap we've had. So that's, that's all I have. Any questions? Any questions of Steve? No. Is Steve, the, uh, uh, new water line at the police department, is that going to eliminate the need for that vault underneath the back yeah. there totally? Yes, it will. Yeah, yep. uh, we don't have to worry about the sump pump in there or anything anymore. 
as far as I know, I'm not sure how they're going to fill it, if they're planning on filling it or not, but yeah. it should take care of everything, I'm hoping. So Will's uh, going to send me some information on it. And also, he's looking at doing 71 Sullivan Street. I'm waiting for a price while he has your equipment there. Makes sense uh, to just move it across the street and take care of that. We haven't had a chance to do that yet. So we got to wait on the price. So. You need to unmute yourself, Mark. Boy, I'm telling you. Oh, Terry got you. Go ahead. Can't, can't find it. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. You're on. You're on. Steve. Yes, I'm here. Um, so, the school budget went up. What did they have? Three percent. Is there any savings from this past year's budget? Because there's no nothing has been going on at the schools the last six weeks. I don't know. I haven't seen their revenue side yet, and see what they have for reserves. Um, that wasn't on the paperwork we got, which is pretty normal. Um, yeah. I'm hoping to see that before the, uh, we commit. Um, but I think we'll probably won't see that until the end of the school year, which will be June 30th. Um, well, it should, it should be done now, for Christ's sake. We know they're not going back to school. School year ended, ended a month ago. Yeah, I know. All right. Well, they have, they have a new superintendent uh, coming in. I understand that. You know, so I'm not sure how involved Steve is at this point, but... Um, I'm getting emailed from him, so I guess he's somewhat involved. But. Have you met her? No, I have not. She's from she's the, the principal North. over to um, the Hussey School, then up to the uh, Norton School. No, yeah, Norton School, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Nice lady. She knows the system, so we'll see yes. how. Been there a long time, from what I understand. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Thank um, you. Any other questions of Steve? All right, we'll move on. Is, um, I have no selectman's communications. So, Mark, could you hand me the uh, warrants to go through? Thank you. <clears throat> is uh, approval of our accounts payable. Is um, We have three here. We have payroll warrant. 2042 for April 16th, 2020, for the amount of $120,681.69. We have an account payable warrant for uh, 2043 from April 23rd, 2020, for the amount of $506,472.79. And we have a payroll warrant, 2043 from April 23rd, 2020 for the amount of $54,048.73. I'm gonna make a motion that we pay these bills pending the approval by the rest of the selectmen and they're signing off on it. I have to make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second, second it. All right, we have a second. I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself, yes. It'll be five nothing, Patty. Thank you. It brings us to our new business. Is uh, the paving bid, Steve? Yes, I. Uh, we only got one bid, as I had said earlier at our last meeting. I talked with Libby Scott, um, and there was a mix up in terms of what roads that we were sections of long uh, swamp and uh, river uh, road. So we uh, talked about that and the price came down because it, it had a wrong footage in there. And it's, it's within our budget around 600,000. So and that's we hopefully we budgeted for seven uh, hundred thousand. So we'll hopefully uh, do just fine. So I recommend we award the bid to Libby Scott. Is, could you just go through the roads that are scheduled, Steve? Yeah, we have a, a section of, from Willie Road up to Alley Pond Road of Long Swamp that we're going to reclaim. It's pretty bad. Um, and then uh, do a base on that. Same thing over on uh, River Road. There's a section there. You probably all know where it is. It's before you get to Diamond Hill. The road is literally coming apart. Um, we're going to shim and overlay um, the Pine Hills section just uh, beyond uh, where we ended last 
year and it'll go all the way to uh, Worcester Road. Um, we're going to do a section of, uh, we're going to do all the cemetery road, even though the chairman doesn't want that done. We're going to tear that up and, and rebuild it a bit and put a uh, base layer down. And we're going to do the same thing on um, Cranberry Meadow Road. There's a section between uh, Worcester Road and Cemetery Road that is really bad. And we're going to reclaim that. And that just about does it. If we have a little bit more, we, we might extend um, from on Long Swamp. There's a section that goes beyond Alley Pond where the pavement, the top layer is peeling off. It's, uh, Robert and I drove through there around that today. He's hoping he's going to get a price from them to see what it costs, maybe to just do a shim in that section to, to hold it in place so we can uh, possibly shim an overlay next year. But uh, that's where those are the roads we're doing. Thank you, Steve. Do we have a motion to accept the paving bid? You're welcome. I motion. Bye. Bye. Second. Did we have a motion by Mark, a second by Ed? I'll go through the roll. Is uh, Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself? Yes. Thank you. Next item is uh, new critical dates for the July 14th, 2020 election. And, uh, since the uh, election was put off till July, this has pushed a lot of our dates back, giving us some extra time. Is uh, Patty, is there anything you want to say about this? No, it's basically informational. Um, I'll put a few things on future agendas that we'll go through. But it basically just pushed everything out a month. Our public hearing, uh, when you set the polling hours, except the the election workers, which I'm having trouble getting. So I might have to make a plea later on. Yeah. And Patty, the um, absentee ballots, I, mm -hmm. I expect that's going to be a big thing this time around. Um, how are we prepared for that? We're good. The state is anticipating a 70% voter um, participation, so we'll have plenty of ballots. So, so we're geared up for absentees. We've already got some in. All right. We don't have the ballot yet, but we've got the request. We're keeping track. All right. Any questions of Patty of the uh, about the dates? No questions, but more of a uh, suggestion. I think we need to make sure that the process for getting an absentee ballot is well posted and you know, well explained to the public so people that want it, that have never done it before, mm -hmm. don't have any issue or, you know, trip ups in getting their ballots. Yep, good idea. I'll post something on the website. Yeah, Terry, Terry and I had talked about this already, about BCTV, you know, putting out several things between now mm -hmm. and the election to make sure that people get that information and know what they can do and how they can go about getting their ballots and getting them back in time. Yeah, Terry and I talked today. We're going to do a PSA um, sometime after May 14th when the warrant's due and the ballot's set. And I do need papers back from Mark and Tom. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, is uh, the Next is the amendment to the 2019 tax commitment. Is Steve, could you explain that a little bit? Well, they, they uh, in the analysis, what they did, they, uh, they found a glitch in uh, the Creo software. This, is, this year, we switched over to the SQL. It was a different upgrade in software. And for some reason, they uh, left off uh, the, the, some of the home, uh, homestead uh, exemptions got missed or something. We're not quite sure what, what happened in the software, but... Um, so it's just we had to send in we have to send in an amended view it uh, changes the uh, overlay I think you have it on your paperwork um, by just over six hundred and I think seventy dollars so um, yeah the, the explanation with the paperwork is that it's um, is a mix up by the TIF financing and how we have to uh, increase the TIF financing amount by $7,359.10 and decrease the overlay by that same amount. Yeah. So, so it's, it's just a matter of that the, a few 
a few uh, taxable properties were missed in the over, in the homestead TIF thing, right? Correct. Yeah, I have some questions about that, but I'm uh, have to wait and see Paul or Karen. Um, homestead seems to go up. Paul's in the waiting room. If Terry wants to let him in, so he can answer those now. Yeah. Did you like to have Paul in there, Steve? Or? Yep, I would. That'd be fine. He may not have the answer right off the yeah. top of his head, but um, that would be fine. Hello, Paul. I don't know if she's let him in. He, he's coming. Okay. Hey, Paul. You there? Not yet. <laughs> yeah. You there, Paul? There he is. I see his picture. Yep. yep. He has to unmute. Yeah. Are you there, Paul? Yeah. Oh, good. I have a question, Paul, Steve. Um, how can the TIF financing plan amount go up to 26000 when last year it was just over, just under 2000. Can you explain that? Hello? <laughs> yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. We can hear you, Paul, but can Hello. you hear us? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear, Paul, can you hear me? Steve? I can hear Steve. Okay, that's who you want to hear then. Um, I just had a question on how the TIF financing plan increased to 26319 when it was much lower last year. Yes. Um, so what happened was um, when the Maine Revenue Services did their audit, mm -hmm. they found that there was some negative um, taxable values that was, you know, due to properties changing. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Paul, are you there now? Um, yes, I can hear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think you answered my question. We seem to be getting some uh, background noise feeding through. I don't know where that's coming from. Is um, but as we could hear Paul when you started. Now, are you there now, Paul? Hello. Hello. Steve? I'm here. Hi, Paul. Are you there now? I can hear you. Yeah, you. He answered my question. Yeah. Yeah. Any any other questions about this? About the, uh, uh, the amendment to the tax commitment? Well, I, want, I understand what the uh, negative rate Paul was talking about. Can you run that by me again? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. There was some there was some negative values in there. There can't be a negative value in in the uh, valuation. Uh, what value. would be negative value? A piece of property? Yes, because because the property was at one time was in exempt status that went back to uh, taxable status. Yeah, so it created a negative value, which you can't you can't have. So we had to put the value at zero. So therefore, there was more money that was added to the uh, TIF financing. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions of Paul? If if not, as I'll. Uh, Take a motion to accept it as presented. So moved. Do we have a second? We have a motion by second. Ed and a second by Mark. As I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. 
Noah? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself, yes. That's five, Patty. Thank you. Uh, we'll move right into our uh, abatements. Is, uh, first one is 104 Knox Lane. It seems like a pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Is uh, it uh, was a piece of property that was changed hands and was taxed improperly, if I'm correct, right, Paul? Yes, it was taxed to the wrong owner. Uh, the deed wasn't recorded. It was actually sold in 2017, but the deed was not recorded until July 2nd of 2019. So unfortunately, we uh, we taxed the uh, incorrect owner. So there's going to be a, an abatement to this person, uh, Jamie Miller. And then there'll be a supplement later on for uh, uh, John Collis to pick up the difference. So the, so the amount that we're requesting is an abatement in the amount of $1,400.67. Move we accept the abatement as presented by the town assessor. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. As I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Ken? Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay. The second one is a um, 380 Portland Street, which is the Northeast Credit Union uh, kiosk building. Uh, they applied for a Betty application, which uh, was, was somehow lost in trans transition here. So um, we overassessed that property $77,707. So we recommend an abatement in the amount of $1,257.02. Move we accept the abatement application as recommended. Second. We have a motion and a second by Noah. Is uh, I'll call the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself? Yes. Thank you. All right. The next one is um, 8 Allen Street, map U1, lot 36. Um, subject property is a two-family unit built in 1920s, situated on a 0.124 acre lot, located across from the uh, Cumberland Farms. The owner purchased the property in, in March 29th of 2017 uh, for 117500 There was, uh, he has made some cosmetic improvements uh, and after the sale, uh, after, cosmetic improvement after the sale. So the owner is requesting a reduction of $50,000 in the assessed value of $226,100 due to some structural damage resulting from a foundation wall that's bowing in excessively in the poor condition of the attached garage. Uh, we did do an interior and an exterior inspection of the property um, and found that the um, you know, what he was indicating was in fact true. The garage is in very poor condition. The wall is uh, bowing in quite substantially. We're recommending an abatement of a um, reduction of 27,100 from 226,100 to 199,000 in an abatement in the amount of $475.06. Uh, I move we accept the abatement as, as recommended. We have a motion. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Is, uh, we have a motion and a second as I will go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself, yes. All right. The next one is tax, tax map R72, lot 10, 560 Portland Street. Uh, the subject property is, is on 31.7 acres. It contains uh, self-storage buildings, office space, an apartment, and garage. Um, primary business use is self-storage with 506 rentable units. The owner is concerned that the property is overvalued and is requesting a reduction in the assessed value of $1,063,000 from $4,022,000 to $2,959,000. The owner did provide a um, income statement and expense data, uh, also yeah. some income, which were used in support of the owner's value. 
However, the income analysis used, used potential gross income, which is an estimated value, not the actual income. Um, we did receive actual income value for calendar year 2018 by the owner to calculate the assessed value as of April 1st. The actual income in 2018 was 226,764. Uh, $264 greater, and the vacancy rent was 6% greater. Um, so the value that we have of $4,280,000, we feel is fair uh, based on the income and the, and the expenses. So we're requesting that this abatement be denied. Any questions? Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a second. I'll second it. Okay. Is I'll uh, go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself? Yes. Uh, next one is tax map. Tax map U one one zero seven fifty six Sawmill Hill. Uh, the subject property is a mansard colonial style home um, that was built in 1876 based on a recent interior and exterior inspection. The subject property has many period uh, features that in its totality are classified as an average plus 20 grade. The uh, property owner was concerned that we, we adjusted the grade from average 10 to an average 20 as part of the reevaluation and that was inaccurate. After said the interior, expense, uh, interior and exterior inspection, we felt that that property value was fair and that it is in fact an above average plus 20 grade. Um, so therefore we are, um, we are recommending that this abatement be denied. So moved. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. I'll go through the rail roll. Is Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mike? Yes. Myself? Yes. Okay. Um, so the next one is a tree growth penalty um, for a piece of land on R66, lot 6A, 193, Route 236. Um, as of April 1st, 2019, this was part of a larger parcel that was classified in the tree growth program and uh, was the Parcel contained less than 10 acres, therefore it does not meet the minimum standards for classification in the tree growth program. The um, penalty that we're recommending is $1,000, I'm sorry, $15,620 uh, to LRB Leasing LLC. So we have a motion. Second. Who made the motion? Ed. I did. I did. Okay, thank you. Is I'll go through the roll. Is uh, Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself? Yes. yes. Five zero. All right. The next one is the, is the supplement that we talked about on 104 Knox Lane, map 45, lot 38. Um, this was uh, re this is to allow us to tax um, John Corliss, but not being taxed as it should have back in 2019. So this is just to replace the abatement that we granted earlier. So, so moved. Yeah. We have a motion, we have a second? Second. Is uh, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Paul. Thank, thank you, Paul. Paul. Good night. Stay safe. You too. Yep. Thank you. Is uh, we have yeah. no public comment, second public comment. We have no executive session. Does anybody have any other business they wish to discuss? I, I, I would like to just remind the public about the uh, 2020 census. Maine is lagging behind the other 49 states. 
And uh, it's very important that people do the census because that determines how much federal money we might be eligible for. So just a reminder, please, it's real easy to do online. So, all right. Fine online too. So, thank you everybody. Hey, one, one, one second. Just, uh, I just want to throw out there, is there, do we have any, any concerns about our, our upcoming budget for next year, considering all the circumstances <laughs> that have, uh, yeah, we have a lot we're presented with, <laughs> do we need to have another discussion? I mean, I, I know we've already done all this. I, I, I'm just, I'm concerned about next year and how it's going to impact us overall. Well, we, we are, a lot of the capital things, some of them are being uh, taken out of the uh, undesignated fund balance that we have available after we have 12.5%. Sure. Um, the expense side that we're appropriating uh, is, is more to do with the increase of uh, adding the principal and interest from the, you know, the fire station and the other bonds we have. So that's what's driving some of that. But Tom and I've had several conversations about it. Um, we can run it through its normal um, referendum, uh, but just because it says we can spend it doesn't mean we have to on the on the uh, surplus. Sure. Yeah, I just want to keep that in the forefront of our minds as we move forward. I, I know you guys have, and I'm sure that's been a discussion, but I, I'm sure we'll have to discuss it more as time progresses. Yeah. But I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and, and moving forward cautiously. Yeah. Once, once we get the evaluation numbers from Karen and Paul, which uh, Lisa Vargas has been waiting on, uh, we have all the expense and revenue sides. We can give it a better idea of what the tax rate is probably going to look like. Uh, sure. then I think, I'm hoping that we can do that either Thursday or early next week. So at our next meeting, we can have that discussion if necessary. Okay. All right. Perfect. We're working on it. And as I said before, is that um i'm not looking at this april's taxes as being too far behind where this usually are is the uh, challenge is going to be in the fall sure. it, it, a lot of it's going to depend on what happens over the summertime is i'm hoping that things will get open up things will get moving and that people feel more comfortable you know using the money to pay their taxes because they need the services so, yeah, but this is something that, you know, yeah, Steve and I discuss it almost every week. Uh, so, you know, what's going to go on. So, is uh, we, are, we are keeping an eye on everything. By that time, I'm hoping everybody's back to work. And we can yes. Get yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. But we're, it's on the radar, that's for sure. Well, I, I'm sure it was. I just wanted to throw it out there that, you know, that way the public obviously knows it. We're concerned about it as well, and it's on our radar. So, yeah. and Steve, as far as we know, the our uh, first responders and police and fire are still doing okay with everything. They're doing fine. Uh, Dennis is in every day. Give us any updates. Uh, they're they're doing good. We have two of our officers in the fire department who have done the work to become captains, which is rather exciting. So we have we'll have three uh, captains Great. there, um, but. They, they see a lot of the COVID-19, uh, not on a regular basis, but it's still out there and it's in Berwick. So um, they're being very careful. And uh, I think Dennis said he takes their temperature every time they come into the building. So they're making sure that everybody's safe. And same with police. It's, it's, it's good. Good. They're doing a great job. I, I was wondering if there's anyone out there that you folks might know that if they're looking for a job or um, want a job for, I'm, I'm looking, we're, we're looking for help and we're having a hard time getting it in the door, but we definitely could use to hire anybody if they want to give me a call. I'll put the word out. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other business? We have one motion to make. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ed. Sure. Oh, Ava, yes. Yes. Have a good night, yeah. everybody. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Yeah. Thank you.